Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me as I try and keep you updated on all the COVID-19 news and research that's occurring across the world. Today, I'm reflecting again on the fact that it seems as the pandemic or epidemic in highly vaccinated regions continues to evolve, there doesn't seem to be much interest in what can we do to reduce circulation of the virus. This is the point that no matter which perspective you have, I cannot imagine anyone thinking that ongoing high circulation of this virus, and let me warn you, this is not a typical virus, so do not confuse this with a cold. It is not a cold. This is is a pretty serious kind of virus that can do lots of things to the body, especially with recurring infection around autoimmunity. So it's not to be underestimated. And even though symptoms may be mild when you have it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't cause long-term effects. And to give you a typical example of a disease that is mild initially and causes long-term problems is HIV. The initial response to the infection in the first four weeks is usually pretty mild. But if you leave it alone and let it do its damage over a few years, it will completely destroy the immune system. Now, this may not be an HIV virus, but believe me, if you leave it alone and let it spread and circulate in the population without any kind of mitigation, it will cause serious damage. The problem is, is that it seems the powers that be have only focused on one option. There's only one egg in the basket or 12 of the same eggs, one bow in the arrow, um, and so one arrow in the bow. And so suddenly now, we have a problem that is relevant to everyone. Do not think anyone around you is outside of this problem. So my aim is to try and come up with innovative strategies that would help people to be able to manage this phase of the pandemic because there is ongoing infection in what I call the persistently infected. And that's part of what I'll be talking about today. I made reference to this paper recently. It was published on the 21st of February, so just a few days ago. And it's looking at prevalence of persistent SARS-CoV-2 in a large community surveillance study in the UK. And it demonstrates effectively that this virus is just circulating in some people. They don't know who they are and no one who knows who they are either. They have oftentimes very little symptoms, but it's the only way to explain that we have this continuous high level of infection across populations. This is part of the reason why I've been focused on Humming Heroes. And this is my final push on this point because we're coming to the end of this Kickstarter campaign and we want your support. We're nearing the finish line. We just have three days to go. This has been given special status on Kickstarter. And so if you, the link is below for you to register you can you can use the link when you go to the campaign here. So this is the campaign page, the power of no, where you get the power of nitric oxide to keep you healthy and looking at the main characteristics of a COVID super spreader. And so you get this ebook here for free. Uh, if you register for the Kickstarter com um, campaign, um, and you will also probably at the end of it, get the webinar that I recently did for free. So we want people to focus on supporting us to reach that milestone. So it is a plea for us to get there. We're almost we're quite close, but we do need that extra push to get us over the line in the next few days. But the purpose of it is because it seems no one is interested in blocking the infection from circulating. So I'm going to give you a little bit of historic reference. And this is from my Substack. And this was from uh, 2022, and I did this presentation. This is in July 2022, and I was looking at the impairment uh, of natural immunity. And in that, I highlighted they did a study in the um, in the UK looking at healthcare workers, and this was the quote from the study. The research seems to indicate that healthcare workers who are infected 
with the Wuhan variant early in the pandemic have depressed immune responses to Omicron after being triple vaccinated. So I highlighted that in 2022 because I could see where this was going. This was likely to be a problem then, and it's still a problem now. And I don't know why it doesn't get picked up. This is pretty serious stuff. So even a year later, in May of 2023, I did another point about why were the vaccinated still circulating COVID. And I specifically mentioned it because there was an article there looking at the fact that at the CDC, this was an article um, done by Beth Mole, um, 181 disease detectives were infected and nearly all of the attendees were vaccinated, but 70% 70 they didn't mask. So they linked it to masking and not to vaccination. But this was a red flag that the immune system um, in the upper airways was unable to control the virus. And so you, you have this cycle. This is going on for years now. And believe me, if we don't address this, this is going to go on again for another three years. It's not going to go away unless there is a strategy that can impact on what's going on. And this is why I'm em emphasizing humming heroes, because we're looking at using nitric oxide to try and see if we can mitigate infection. This is the reality. A lot of people don't realize, they think that Omicron is just like the other variants. But you have to look carefully at the research. Omicron has a seven to 10 times predilection for the sinuses. And so this is what it will do. It will inflame the sinuses. It will infect there and you can't get to it. So even when you swab, you will not find any virus, but the virus is still in the sinuses. There is no antiviral that seems to be able to get rid of it, or I should say there's no antiviral that is accepted by the public health and scientific community that could probably resolve this, so people don't have any options. And so this is why I'm highlighting that one of the ways to mitigate this persistent infection is through the use of nitric oxide. This seems to be where it, it resides as a reservoir inside this, these sinuses. High levels have been found based on the research. And what it will do is that it will cool down the fire of inflammation, giving the immune system an opportunity to try and resolve the infection. So the combination of increasing nitric oxide, which is an antiviral in and of itself, it can help with inflammation and is actually antibacterial as well. Why would anyone not try and manage their, their inflammation or infection this way? That comes back to humming heroes because humming quite simply increases the nitric oxide levels in the sinuses by 1500%. So why would anyone, simple action, deep breath in, hum as you go out, it's so simple, and this is the point, and this is why we're trying to target this Kickstarter campaign, the power of no humming heroes. It is very simply a story that hopefully captures the imagination of anyone, children and otherwise, to be able to grasp the power of nitric oxide to solve this never-ending sinus inflammation. And so this is, this is all that it's about. And so in order to understand the, the relevance of what it was that they were doing, is when you go back to this paper, which is the prevalence of SARS-CoV-2 in a large community surveillance study, they were looking at a large cohort in the UK, technically 66,000 households, and they were swabbing them every month. Now, in that, they identified that about 381 people with SARS-CoV-2 persistent at least 30 days, of which they had high vir viral RNA persisting for, for more than 60 days, they consider that they are persistent infections. This is a large, likely to be a huge underrepresentation of the numbers, which is why we have such high circulating virus. What can be done? Because if they don't get rid of the infection, and oftentimes what they found is they were asymptomatic. So they would spread it at home, they would spread it at work, they spread it on the bus, they spread it on the subway. 
and then everybody else gets infected. And then you have other people who have the same characteristics in terms of um, their their immune system is not as adapted, can't control the infection of the virus in the sinuses, they do the same. And so when we look at this high level of circulating virus, and this is what they're finding in the wastewater samples, it's rising across different parts of the world, in Canada, in the USA, it's likely to represent persistent infection. There has to be a way out of it. At least I'm trying to come up with innovative ideas. Because at the moment, we're hearing absolutely nothing about what the population can do. That's where I'm saying that utilize everything that we have. Try and deal with the inflammation in the sinuses. And if you do have sinus problems, believe me, if you hum regularly, you don't have to overdo it. Just every time you remember it, a few minutes a day, just hum as you breathe out, deep breath in. And this rising nitric oxide is likely to help you. And so we want you to be aware of the end of the, um, the science. I don't want you to just be doing it. And so therefore, that's why you have to, even if you don't want to support our Humming um, Heroes um, um, platform, please at least get the free book, ebook, The Power of No, Nitric Oxide. It's, we've just put together a webinar so that we can help people to understand more about the science. You don't have to join the Kickstarter campaign, even though we want you to. It's more important for you to be well-educated, to understand what we're talking about, and share this with family and friends. At the end of the day, the responsibility for health lies with the individual. I think that the COVID pandemic has demonstrated that clearly. Whoever's done what or hasn't done what, ultimately, your health is your responsibility. If you continue to wait for people to give you the answers and tell you what to do, it's likely that your health is going to suffer in the long run. Let's try and work together, be creative, come up with ideas, come along, because this is the beginning of an education program. Let's try and suppress the inflammation in the sinuses working together so that that persistent, never-ending inflammation in the sinuses can be resolved. The point is this. Let us not accept persistent COVID infection. Let us try and learn, do the science, work together. Let's make it a better place for everyone. Have a good evening.